Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mr. Matthew Does Coding YouTube channel. Have you ever wanted to make beautiful terrain scenery such as the one I am standing in right now? Well, you're in luck because today I'm going to be talking about everything that you need to know about how to use the terrain editor. So let's get right into it. Alright, so you're going to want to load up Studio, and then up here at the top, you're going to want to click on the View tab, and go over right here to the Terrain Editor. So click on that, and then it should open this window on the left side of your screen. So we have two tabs here, Create and Edit. We're mainly going to be focusing on Edit, but I'll go over a little bit of what Create can do. So there's this button here that says Generate, and what you can do with that, it'll do this weird looking thing when you open it up is it'll essentially just create terrain and you can set biomes it's kind of just like a way to create pre-made terrain without having to create it yourself so if I took this little box here and I stretched it like this to give myself a good chunk of land and then I selected different biomes, such as hills, plains, mountains, maybe even like canyons. And you can set the biome size too, so if you want really, really large biomes, this whole thing would probably be like one biome. But then you can set it to really tiny, and it'll be uh, filled with a ton of biomes, all really, really small. I'll set it to like 104 and they can set a seed just put in like whatever you want like that and then hit generate and after a while this will take a bit of time depending on your computer but after a while it'll create that block of land some of it's under the base plate so if I got if I get that to the base plate there we go so now you can see there, we have our terrain that's been pre-built for us, and it even has caves attached to it, which is a pretty cool thing. So, it's got the mountain, the little mountain thing that we um, selected. I don't see much of a canyon. Maybe this could be considered kind of canyon-like, but it's a very small area of land, so it didn't have a lot to work with, but I think it's pretty good for what it did do so that's cool but let's say you wanted to possibly create your own thing and not have it just be a preset seed like what we just did right here well for that you go into the edit tab so in here click on the draw button right here and it'll open up the brush settings and the material settings so let's focus on the brush settings real quick. There's spherical, square, and cylindrical. Um, so I have sphere selected. So you can see that my little cursor is a sphere, which means that if I hold down left click and I move around, everything will be spheres. So, yeah, and then if I do a square, well, it's all squares. Cylinders. Just as you predicted, no way, it's cylinders. You can change certain aspects of these. With the sphere, you can change its size. Only its size because it's a sphere. But with the cube and the cylinder, you can change a little bit more. You can change the base size and you can change the height as well. But those are, those are locked by default. If you click on this little button here, then it won't be locked anymore and you can change the size to be different so you can have a more of a rectangle instead or you can have something that's more kind of squished like that um, and if you lock it they'll stay in sync with each other and the same goes for the cylinder you can change its height if you unlock this so Let's create just a little bit of land here. I'll use the square. And let me just do this, right? Create a little bit of just flat land to work with. So we have this now. 
and we can change our material that we use to, you know, paint or draw, as it's called. So we have all the default little materials that Roblox gives us. I'll select um, concrete. So now it'll all be concrete. And you can see it actually changes up a little bit how it's drawn. You can see this is a bit more jagged than the grass. And the same would go for rock as well. The rock is not smooth. It's all bumpy when it's drawn. So that's cool. So let me add in just a little bit more to our scenery here. Like I said, I added a little bit more to our scenery, so now it's kind of like we have a beach here going. I can even add some water to it if I really liked. So, we have that now. And one important thing in this add section here is plane lock, this section. There's off, auto, and manual. So manual, it'll ask you to edit it. It's a bit more technical so it'll ask you for positions and stuff like that auto will just based on where your camera is tilted and your mouse position it'll lock it automatically to a certain plane so once you start drawing it's locked onto that plane if you turn it off then things will start to overlap with each other like that so there is no locking on the plane it just goes over whatever it touches which in this case is the base plates and then our grass, sand, and water. Ignore water means that you can just draw underwater and it won't affect things. In, and it'll just treat it like the water isn't there. But if you turn off ignore water, then you trace on top of the water. So, yeah, that's that. And now, we don't want it to just be flat like this because that's boring. Let's add a little bit more to it. So let me go to the sculpt tab. That's where our next destination is. So sculpting is like raising and lowering the ground. So we have different modes. We have add and we have subtract. So if I turn, so we have add, you can see the terrain is rising up with my cursor and then if I turn on subtract then it'll start to erode the ground and it's the same as the draw tool with the base size but it now has a thing called strength and strength is just how much does it affect the terrain when you're sculpting it either rising or ro or lowering it so if I set it to one then you can see the effects are pretty big compared to a player and it's actually pretty good if you're doing large scale stuff with terrain it's a good idea to sometimes put in a dummy to see the scale of what you're doing so you can see that did a lot to our terrain when I raised it up like that and then if I turned it down to like a point three it would do just a little bit less than before there we go I lost the cursor for a second um base size if I turn that down it'll just affect a tiny little area and if you hold down as well it'll just keep going for quite a while and then you just get this weird looking snake thing <laughs> popping out of the ground so do what you want with your land and change it up and make it look cooler and less flat than it did before. And come back to this video when you're done. Alright, so I changed up our terrain a little bit so it's a bit more hilly and the beach is a bit more indented into the ground a little bit so that the rest of the land is a bit higher than it is um, over there but now you can see that there's some jagged kind of sharp looking spots that you might want to make a bit smoother 
And that's exactly what the smoothing tool does. So let's move on to this section here. Um, the smoothing tool does exactly what it says. It smooths things out. So changing the base size and the strength just like the sculpting tool. And if I run it over this land, you can see it start to move and change to be smoother and less rigid and sharp and to flow better. Especially with things like the water where we have some gaps here that have emerged I can use the smoothing tool to fix that up and make things look better so if we just do that then our terrain starts to look a bit cleaner and you don't have to do this with all of your stuff because sometimes you want jaggedness but other times you want it to be smooth and nice so, do with that what you want. There's a flattening tool, which just flattens land, and it has a couple different ways of going about flattening land. There's the three different modes, flattening mode. There's one where it'll flatten it so that it goes upwards. There's one where it'll flatten it downwards below the plane lock area. So, this plane here that we have, it'll flatten it to go below it, and then with this one, it'll flatten it to go onto it, or slightly above it. And then this one, it just kind of changes it dynamically. So if I do that one, then you can see it flattens it, but it flattens it kind of... I don't know how to, how to explain it, but... Um, you can use these different ones to suit your needs, however you need. Like with this top part right here, let's say I didn't want it to be so round, I could take this and I could flatten it. So that it kind of plateaus more. Or I could use this kind. And it just does it slightly differently. Just do, you can do it for however you need it to work and if you need on a bigger scale you can change the base size and all that kind of stuff um, alright so let's move on to paint what paint does is it just paints over the land with your cursor so if I decided you know what this part right here I don't want it to be grass I want it to be I don't know um, rock then I can go in and I can use the paint tool to paint it rock or if I wanted to change some of the sand to look a bit different like sandstone then I can do that and I can make little patches of sandstone on the beach or I can even add some limestone in there too now we have three different colors um, maybe I wanted this spot right here to be kind of leafy and so did I want for this one and this spot right here. You can use it to just kind of paint the land. Because the terrain is your canvas. Essentially. And we have one last thing to go over, which is the fill. So what fill does is... It has two different modes on it. It has fill and replace. So fill, the regular fill, it'll just fill the square with whatever... Um material that you tell it to so if I just wanted a giant cube of the glacier material and hit apply it'll just create a giant cube of the glacier but let's say that you wanted to create something like um, you wanted to replace a giant section of your terrain with a different material but you didn't want to have to go through the process of using the paint tool and potentially missing little splotches and all that kind of stuff you could use this fill tool to just select the boundaries and then set it to the replace and then you can tell it which material you want to replace and what with so 
source material, that's what it want that's what it's gonna replace. So currently it'll only replace the sand here. And it'll replace it with brick. Um, just so it stands out a bit more for the example, I'll change that to cracked lava. And then we hit apply. All the sand is now replaced with cracked lava. So let me undo that. We could change it to leafy grass. And there we go. Um, regular gra grass. We can do that as well. It works for all the materials to replace with all the other materials. And heck, you can even replace it with air. So if I wanted to turn the grass, or the leafy grass, all into air, boom. Now it's all just air. And because we painted over it, it, o it only scratched the surface of it, and it wasn't actually leafy grass all the way down to the bottom of the terrain, which is why we have holes like this now. So that's pretty cool. And you can use all these little edit tools to create custom terrain to fit your needs and make beautiful terrain like the beginning of this video that was in the intro. So that's all for this. Thank you so much for watching. And the next video will be the next episode in the Roblox How-To series. So I hope you're looking forward to that and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.